Okay, so I'd like to give a Gauss's law problem where we um, don't have a uniform charge distribution, right? So most of the time we're going to use uniform charge distributions, um, but this time I want to use something that's not. Occasionally there are non-uniform charge distributions in your homework. Um, so the charge distribution I want to look at is a radial charge distribution, um, and it fills all of space. Okay, so that um, charge distribution that I want to look at is one where um, after any particular um, amount of time um, d, right, uh, the charge density um, reduces by 2. So rho starts out here, and this is the maximum. We'll call that r0 because that's 0. And as we go out radially from the center r, um, we each time um, we go out one distance d, we have our distribution, right? Or our charge density, excuse me. So go to 2d, and we have it again, right? Then we go to um, 3d, and we have it again, right? We go to 4d. and we have it again like that and so this is just a curve like this it's just a decay it's nothing um, astounding um, but we're just having the um, value every every d so and it's a um, continuous distribution so it's so it's so it's just this line here and um, we'd like to figure out what sort of field we see in that sort of situation. Okay. Um, so we're given um, a uh, charge distribution. with radial symmetry, let's say. Um, and so that has a maximum charge density. Of rho naught and a um, distance where it drops by half right of um, D so that that's really all we um, need to know about that thing I think um, and then we want to find something what do we want to find we want to find uh, the electric field E Right. And we do that right using Gauss's law. This would be quite annoying using um, a Coulomb type integral, right? But it's fairly simple this way. Um, and we always remember that the Gauss's law is uh, the amount of charge enclosed in a surface is equal to epsilon naught times the amount of electric flux through that surface. So now what we want to do is we want to um, form a strategy. Okay? So our strategy is uh, one, let's write the um, charge distribution. Um, we have to do that before we do anything else. Obviously, that's um, just what you have to do if you want to do anything mathematically, right? Um, two, we want to choose a surface. Let's move that up a little bit. So we choose a surface. 
of the right symmetry, right? Um, three, uh, find the flux through that surface. And we do that because finding the flux through this surface is going to be really, really easy. Um, and the thing that's going to take us the time is going to be um, integrate to find the total charge. Okay, and then way back down here, let's assume it's going to take all of this room. Okay, there's the end. And it's way down here. I can give you a little more. Five. Um, you just find E from Gauss's law. Okay, so uh, that's about it. Um, so let's go up here for a second. We'll spend a little more time up here. Um, so first, let's go ahead and um, no, we're going to find the answer, right? And I'll use basically all this room for that. Um, one, we want to write the charge distribution, right? Well, that means that rho of r, right? You know, starting off this zero and going down, we just said that um, for every full distance d, uh, the thing drops by half. It's just it's just um, 2 to the minus r over d times rho naught. That's it. Quite simple. Um, we want to choose a surface. Uh, we'll just use a sphere at the center. Sphere around the origin. Right? and um, of radius r. Um, right, so that's all we need. Um, and because it's spheric, spherically symmetric, the um, electric field has to be spherically symmetric as well, right? So E is always going to point along the um, normal, which is one of these things that we need to do with um, Gauss's law. And um, and so we'll just use that. That's perfectly good. Um, so what's the flux through this thing? Well, I just said that um, for the flux, I said that the um, electric field, right? Um, so we need the, integral, the surface integral, e to dA. I just said that the electric field was going to be um, whatever it is in the r direction, right? Um, and that's obviously in the r hat direction, and the unit normal is in the r hat direction as well. And the area of this sphere is 4 pi r squared, right? So um, this is 1, so we just have 4 pi r squared er. Nice and simple, okay? So now we get to 4, we want to integrate to find Q. Now this is not difficult as such, it's just um, one of these things that you have to do to, to um, get on through with it. Um, so the problem here is going, to be, um, is going to be that we need to use integration by parts. So the full integral looks like this, right? We want to integrate over the entire um, volume inside the sphere, right, enclosed within it. So we go from 0 to r. And we want to get everything inside, so we have to integrate um, through the entire angle, right, the entire solid angle. So um, we've got those things. And then we need um, our row of r, right, which was 2 to the minus r over d times rho naught um, times the integration part. So this is 0 to 2 pi, so that's our um, phi element. So our phi element is r 
sine um, theta, let's give these guys primes, r sine theta prime d phi prime, right? And um, then, or r prime, excuse me. Then we have our theta element, which is r prime theta prime, and then we have our radial element, which is r prime. Now the reason why I'm worried about these primes is that the r prime is a dummy variable. This r is going to be a real var variable. So I just want to make sure there's a little bit of a difference there um, visually for while I'm doing this. Now, um, there's no um, dependence on the 2 pi. The um, dependence on, on the um, theta here is just the sine theta prime. Um, that's just your normal sort of uh, surface surface part of the integral. It's going to end up being 4 pi. Um, this guy here, this rho naught, he's constant, so he comes out. And then we get this 0 to r, um, r prime times r prime, which is r prime squared. And we have a... Um, 2 to the minus r prime over d, right, and a d r prime, okay. So this is sort of an exponential integral, right, um, only it's, I mean, it's not quite exponential, but it's um, it's got a 2 here. We can do the integral of that very similarly. We've already, we've already discussed in a previous problem uh, the slight difference there. And then here we've got our r prime, right. And this uh, combination itself alone does not um, does not integrate, but we can use integration by parts, right? I'm going to put use this area in here. It's big and blank, and we need something to keep tra some place to keep track of stuff while we're doing integration by parts because it just has lots of little parts to worry about, right? Um, so with integration by parts, I always remember it as um, being being the reciprocal of the uh, product rule, or I'm, I guess not reciprocal, but um, whatever it is. Um, so it's the inverse process of the product rule, which which means we just basically go with this and flip it around, right? So. Um, we, we're saying that this part here is, say, this part, right? And then what we want to do is we want to um, substitute that part for these parts, and we'll be perfectly fine. Um, so when we do that, this constant stays out here, right? And we need to assign parts for each one of these things. So. Um, we want to slowly get rid of these r primes, right? So each time we take an r derivative, uh, that reduces. So, um, so this looks like what I want to do is say that the derivative part is the part with the two to the minus r prime over d, and the and the not not derivative part here is the r prime squared. So we've got um, u equals something and u prime, or u, uh, let's call it, yeah, u, um, yeah, u prime is good. I don't know why I'm having trouble with that concept. So this is the one we want to keep, right? So that's 2 to the minus r prime over d times dr prime. So we do the integral of that thing, so that's just minus d over ln2. The ln2 comes from this being a 2 and not an e. e to the minus r over d. Okay. Um, and so our v, being um, r prime squared, gives us a v prime of um, 2 r prime d r prime. Okay. So the first part of this um, integration by parts is um, the u v part. So here we just um, take the u times the v, which is minus d over ln2, right? Um, 
This should be a two, excuse me. That's what I get for talking about E's. Uh, D over ln2, um, R prime squared, 2 to the minus R over D. Okay, and that goes from 0 to R. So that gets evaluated. Then we subtract from that the integral from um, 0 to R, right, of uh, U times V prime. So that's minus D over ln2. I keep doing that in my notes as well. ln2 um, times um, 2 to the minus r over d, right? Times 2r prime times dr prime. Okay? All the way there at the edge. Uh, can I get a little more light? No, it doesn't want any more light over there. Okay? Huh. All right, and close bracket. Did I get all the? Mm, I don't have a lot of room for that, do I? Can I move this? Yes. Okay. Um. So, how do we? We have to keep going. We want to keep going really quickly at this point because it's no no different. Um. So we have four pi rho naught. Um. At zero, this is zero because r prime squared is zero. Um, at r, it's just taking all these r primes and um, turning them into uh, into r's. So we get a minus d over ln two um, r squared two to the minus r over d. Uh, here we have um, when we put everything together a plus two d over ln two. Um, and rule we'll zero to r, r prime two to the minus r prime over d, dr prime. Same thing. So now with this guy, we have to do the um, we have to do the integration by parts again. We get a w is equal to um, r prime. So w prime is equal to dr prime. Okay, so that's all we do with that guy. So we have a four pi rho naught, right? Um, minus d over ln two. Well, actually, we can pull that minus d over ln two out. That's perfectly fine. We're okay with that. So we end up with the um, r prime two to the minus r over d. Um, now we have to do that. Uh, now we add in another one of these substitutions. We have this u times um, w now. So we have minus d over, oh, there's 2, minus d over ln 2, um, 2 to the minus r over d times r prime, right? And um, that's evaluated at uh, 0 and r uh, minus some integral, 0 to r of r prime um, 2 to the minus r prime over d. Oh, no, there's no r prime. Just that thing, dr, right, prime. Uh, we have a minus d over ln 2. That's what we end up with that there. OK, so um, I'm going to fail here. It's not going to make it in less than a minute. Uh, well, since it won't make it in less than a minute, um, why don't you try to um, finish this up? See see where it goes. I'll have a let. I'll have two or three minutes worth of um, video in the next in the next video, assuming that this one goes through. Um, yeah. See you in thirty seconds. Okay, so it, this is really just finishing up the last video. Um, unless I can concatenate it, like I said, I had trouble, like I've said in class, I had trouble concatenating the videos with the software recently. That may be for the same reason I had trouble uploading those same videos um, and had to remake them. Um, but that's the reason why I'm doing this right now is just to not have to remake all the video, all this, you know, 20 minutes worth of stuff that I just did. Um, so if you haven't watched that and I haven't concatenated the thing and I haven't edited this out, then Go go ahead and um, watch the previous video because 
I don't really feel like giving a synopsis. Uh, so basically we're here again. We just um, got done with a bunch of integration by parts stuff, right? And now we need to go ahead and um, finish that up and get a good value for the enclosed charge, right? So uh, now we have um, R squared, um, oh, I pulled out the minus sign there, so that's actually the minus sign. That's a minus sign, that's a plus sign. We have an R squared um, times two to the minus R over D. Um, when we evaluate those things, we get a plus two D over LN two. Um, R times two to the minus R over D. Um, the zero again cancels out. This guy, uh, when we integrate it out, we get yet another um, factor of D and LN2. And um, then we just have a two to the minus R over D. And we also get a um, zero term in this one. The zero term in this one is just um, minus a two d squared over ln 2 squared. Okay. Um, beautiful stuff. So I'll do what I can to um, make that a little bit nicer. Let's see what I can do. Well, I can collect these terms here. That's perfectly fine. And I can um, factor through that minus sign. So we have a 4 pi rho naught. Um, yeah, I'm going to factor through, actually I'm going to pull out a minus 2d squared over ln2. So I have um, d over ln2 um, cubed, and if I'm pulling out that 2, if I pull out a 2, then that should be an 8, right? So then I get 1 minus a bunch of stuff um, times 2 to the minus r over d, right? And that bunch of stuff is, um, well, this guy here is just a 1, right? Um, and this guy is an r times, uh, uh, let's see, times ln2 divided by d. So it's ln2 times r over d uh, plus an ln2 squared over 2. I've got too many of these things. Tough. Times r squared over d squared. And that's what we get, right? And um, I don't know, do you think that makes sense? Well, I mean, I, I per personally think it makes sense. So we're starting with um, we're starting with this distribution way up here, right? Where we're exponentially reducing the um, the charge density, but the charge density is always positive. It's, we're exponentially reducing it to, towards zero at infinity, right? So we come down here, right? Then um, what we have is something that is um, zero at zero, right? But this term gets smaller and smaller as we as we um, as we uh, increase r. Uh, do you see that? You see that? You don't see that. Do you? You, you you don't see it. Okay. So if you don't see it, you should plot it, right? And and like like you said, you just don't see that. Just by that, you don't see that. You don't see that it's positive, and it has to be positive because there's no negative charge, right? Um, but you just don't see that, so you, you want to plot it, right? Like I said, um, you know, when r is zero, we've got zero. When r is um, zero, we've got one minus one, which is zero, right? So here we go there. And when r gets really, really large, this whole thing goes to zero. So we get 
um, basically this value here for our total charge, which is which makes sense, right? So we have rho naught times d cubed times some um, factor of some factor of uh, no units, just some num numerical factor. That's that's what I'm looking for. So eventually it gets up to this um, eight pi over ln2 cubed, right, times rho naught d cubed. So that's, that's our, um, that's our maximum q. And if you actually plot it like I did, um, you get something starting off not increasing very much, but then twisting up this way and exponentially approaching the maximum amount of charge, right? And that, and that makes a lot of sense. We, we're adding up, um, we keep adding up more and more of this, uh, but every time we step up a little bit more, there's less of this to add in. Um, and it's a nice, and because it's a nice exponential distribution, it doesn't just keep growing. It completely, um, it limits to a certain value. It's a, it's a very nice integral. Um, uh, again, if you don't follow this, you should go ahead and try to do it yourself without without looking at this. Um, let's see, where do, where do I want to go from here? I've got my charge, so I want to find the electric field from Gauss's law, right? So that's five. Um, so this whole thing is equal to epsilon naught times four pi oh, r squared. Yeah, that whole thing times four pi r squared um, er. Which means that e, this is just the radial direction of that thing. And so we can just figure out what e is. E is, um, well, we divide this thing by 4 pi epsilon naught, right? So we end up with a 2 here. So we have 2 over ln 2 cubed, right? Um, times rho naught over epsilon naught, 1 over r squared times this wonderful long function, or it's not, not a function, I guess, but expression um, that we love so well, right? So I'll write it in its entirety, and then we give it a radial di direction, radial direction r hat, and we're done. That's what we were looking for, and isn't it beautiful? So, um, you see, except for the mechanics of this integral, which is, I mean, that's a, that's a uh, at best, calculus 2 integral, right? So you've been doing it for three years. Um, if, except for that, everything here was completely straightforward. In fact, this was straightforward, it was just long, right? Um, you know, I did a lot of these when I was an undergraduate, you just got to do a lot of them and everything will be okay. All right. That, I mean, that that's all there is to it. Um, so thank you very much. I will see you in class. And I mean, I know you're excited, right? We get that practice test on Friday, right? And after the practice test, you have a whole weekend to gear up to, you, you know, get yourself ready for that test on Monday. So, I mean, I can't tell you. I, I really can't tell you um, how jealous I am of you right now. Bye now.